Hey guys, welcome to Cricket Fanatics Magazine. This is your review show. I'm your host, Harley Boyden, and this is the show where we talk about the series between South Africa and England. A T20 series that hurts all of us, I think, as South Africans um, supporting this team. Obviously, our English fans are going to be um, all smiley, smiley. Uh, but I do think that they have some sort of sympathy for, for us because I know at heart they are all um, Proteus supporters. So um, I think we're going to have great conversations today and obviously with us another special guest as well on the show as well, which I'll introduce later. But before we get going, obviously, the guys that are tuning in, if you haven't already, please subscribe and click that notification bell for all future videos. Let's get into it. I'm going to introduce you to the guys on the panel. Um, <laughs> guys that have been consistently here. So guys like Mpo, <laughs> guys like Adam. We got that guy that's trying to connect still. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we've got Aditya here on the show, which is awesome. A new face, a new perspective. An awesome piece that he sent me today, actually, guys, that I, I wanted to really put on the site. But it was too good to put on the website straight away. So I thought I'm going to keep it for the digital magazine for the next issue. Because it's looking forward to the World Cup and what South Africa needs to do, etc. So um, I'm really excited about that particular, guys. Hi, everybody in the comments. I know everybody's sad, but get your comments in. Um, let's get those comments in and let's hear what we can change. And we've got Lubabalu on the show as well. So welcome to the show, brother. <sighs> where to start? Where to start? Let's start with Aaron because, I mean, let's just get the worst thing out of the way. Um you guys played phenomenally well. I mean, completely tutored us in how we should be playing T20 cricket. Um, you made that total seem like, like I said, it was light work. Um, we struggled. We seem to have struggled on the pitch. Um, I don't know exactly how we did when England plays like that. It makes us doubt some of our, our performances. Although I must protect my hats off to Rassi and Faf. Um I think they've they've answered their critics um, as two guys that are the core that we need to build our team around. I think if we're looking for guys that are going to play the slower game or take their time to get into 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 the game, etc., we need to be, let them do that job and build the rest of the guys around them. But first and foremost, Alan, just let me know what's your thoughts. How proud of you are you, are you of your team? Well, of course I'm proud, but I mean, for anyone thinking I'm going to come on air and give it all big and all that lot, I'm not. Because if anything, as an England fan has taught me, in particular after 2015, you have to be both gracious in defeat and, of course, in victory. So I'm not going to come on here and say, well, South Africa, the worst team ever, England are the best. Okay, that's not how this is going to work. Because, as I said, that was last night, wasn't it, on the preview show, actually. I do have a lot of sympathy for South Africa. I see a lot of similarities between the South Africa team now and R1 back in 2014-15. They're very much a team in transition. So, yes, it was a poor series from a South African perspective. Obviously, from an English perspective, I'm very, very happy. It was very clinical. The bowling in the first two matches was fantastic. And then even tonight, when the bowling wasn't so good, how good was Dad Milan? 99 not out. I think at the end as well, he forgot that there wasn't an extra ball left as well. So he could have gone on to get a century. But he is just another level right now. And in his last 10 innings, 450 plus scores. He's absolutely another world at the moment. He's an extraordinarily gifted player and someone who's going to be absolutely imperative for England's success heading into that 2021 World Cup. And then Joss Butler as well, finding form, brilliant, innovative, inventive, destructive. And not only that, when he hits the ball, he hits it so cleanly and it looks so effortless. It's just champagne cricket to watch for England fans at the moment. Wow. So for me, I'm very, very happy. Of course, I don't think we played at our best. But if anything, that should be an ominous warning for a lot of teams. We've won a series 3-0 with a team which you could argue there are still gaps, <laughs> of course, in the bowling department. A lot of gaps. <laughs> yes, I know, yeah. Especially after tonight. But yeah, it, it, I just think it was a very, very good series. And of course, yeah, as you can tell, quite happy. Yeah, I have to kind of eat my words about what I said about Dava Milan because um, obviously you know what I said at the beginning of the series. I said that, uh, yeah, I was like Johnny Bestow every day of the week yep. and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but, um, yeah, he's been phenomenal. The way he tore us apart is incredible. So um, I have to give the props where they're due. I mean, Mpo, from your perspective, South Africa. Oh, where do I start? Okay, let's start with the good stuff. Um <sighs> I think Grassi's innings today was the reason why he's been the best, one of the best two batsmen this team has had over the past 18 to 24 months. Um, 
Fuff also batted very well. The fact that we got to 192 was good. I love the way Timber batted at the top with Quinny. They they complemented each other well. Yes, Quinny's shots and Timber shots, you know, were a function of of of, 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 of a couple of missed times, but they, they they gave a foundation for Fuff and 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 Rassi to do well. I'm happy that Rassi finally gets the score. I think three scores of of of, of three meh scores in this in this sort of call them anything under 30 is, is isn't much in 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 this in this format can can make your position in the side a little bit uh, 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 questionable. The bowling, I, I, I kind of, I, you didn't feel like there was a spirit to like, you know, wanting to win this game, even though you've set 192. It's kind of like, it kind of felt like South Africa wanted to just pitch up and bowl and you'd win, you'd, you'd restrict England. And I think they've learned from that because it felt as though it, 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 it had no life. It had no soul. It had no plan. Like what was going on? You know, the only person who bowled well was George Linder, who is one of the positives, and he bowled well. I just yeah. felt that that second over from Quinton in the power play shouldn't have been should have been outside of the power play, and he should have been trying to be looking for wickets rather than restricting runs. We moved very quickly to trying to restrict England rather than just bowling people out and and trying to get wickets. You know, in as much as this batting lineup is long wicked stem the run flow and that's what South Africa missed. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, no, excellent. Um, Aditya, from your perspective, um, just give us a, a quick um, overview from what you, from an outsider what you thought about this particular um, game. I agree with everything that's been said so far. Um, but obviously, kudos to uh, Faf and Rasi for batting uh, the way they did. I think they were three down for 60 odd and um, you know, given what's happened in the last two games, it looked like we're, look, we're heading for another 140-odd, 150-odd sort of innings. But then to see Rassi and Faf unbeaten by the end of it, and I think that inning, that that over in which uh, Rassi took apart Jofra was was unbelievable. I think that really set the tone for how they played for the rest of the innings. Um, with respect to the bowling, again, I agree, that didn't appear to be a plan. Uh, plan, yeah. And uh, I'd say the same with the fielding. You know, I think, I don't know, some that that spark that we generally associate with South African cricket teams on the field was just missing. Um, and maybe it's too early and I'm sure that, you know, I guess uh, the jury would be divided on it. But um, it's a question that I'd have to raise about the captaincy. You know, Quentin de Kock just... I don't know. He didn't inspire the sort of confidence that that South Africa were really in it to win. And um, given we've we've talked about Quinton uh, in previous shows as well, and you know, I just I don't know. I feel like you know when when Josh Butler started going after uh, Simapla, I think I don't know how you pronounce him. Sipamla. Sipamla, yes. Um, when he started going after Sipam, I think that was the over in which England really sort of turned the screws. And mm-hmm. at that point, I think, you know, a word or two of counsel would have would have helped him, you know, because he knew that that was the bowler that they were going to target. That was the over that they were going to use as a launch pad for the rest of the innings. And somewhere I just felt like Quentin de Kock's captaincy was lacking. Um, maybe it's, it is early days, but... Um, I think it's it's something worth observing. You know, I don't like yeah. Quinton de Kock, I'm sure he must have the tactical news to be the captain, but I don't know if if he's able to sort of develop players, you know, and help yeah. them grow through tough situations. Okay, yeah. We're going to get into that more, more in depth at the end. I just want to introduce our guest early. <clears throat> Sorry for that. I just have to. Do, I wanted to introduce our guest early. So, as you know, um, our special guest, Six Gun Grill special guest speaker, and today it's going to be none other than Mondi Zondeki. And I'm really excited about this one because he always has amazing insights into the game. So, um, Mondi, um, just give us your takeaways from this particular match. Where do you think South Africa? really went wrong um i would like to know 
what positives you'd actually take out of it. Oh, hi, how's it, guys? Um, hope you guys are all well. Um, yeah, thanks for having me uh, on the show. Uh, this particular game, I, I thought, I honestly thought that 192 was going to be enough. Um, it seemed like it was a pretty good wicket, and obviously, um, Rassi and Faf played out of their skins. Um, uh, I've never seen Temba personally as um, a sort of T20 player. I think we've got um, a few more explosive um, younger guys who could come in and do that uh, opening job. Probably slightly better because we've always, <clears throat> we've always looked at him as a sort of a, the test player, but certainly can play in the longer version, the 50 over game. Um, I would like to, there's a kid called Milan who's, uh, ironically, who's uh, here in Cape Town at Cobras, who's a really good explosive young player. Um, at some point, Aiden Markham was supposed to be the next big thing, the next captain of the country, and he seems like he's disappeared as well. Um, but again, the positives obviously was our batting. Uh, Rassi and, and, and Rassi, and, um, who's been very consistent over the last couple of months. Um, but obviously the negative was our bowling. Uh, I don't think that um, we did a really good job in terms of containing. And as soon as, as you said, when Supamla started taking a beating from Pata, um, it seems like everything just went downhill from there. And uh, there didn't seem to be like a plan B. Um, and it just seemed like a very easy victory. When Once you get 192, you thought it was going to be very competitive. But uh, unfortunately, uh, it was a very easy victory for England. So I think the biggest problem was certainly was our bowling. Supamla is a young guy who's still trying to find his feet uh, in the game. And what Butler did do very well was target him and put him under pressure, put the young guy under pressure. And that uh, was the momentum that uh, England needed. Um, so, yeah, our bowling was disappointing today. Obviously, without Pavada, was, you know, who can't play every game. Um, we were sort of short um, in, in terms of that. And I do think we still, have, we still need a quality world-class all-rounder in our team, especially in our one-day team. Um, I don't know what happened to Chris Morris, but he does a really good job in T20 cricket. I'm not sure if he's uh, not in the picture or he's retired from international cricket. I'm not sure. Um, I thought someone like him with his, with his experience and he can also hit the ball a, a long way uh, was uh, certainly someone could have needed, could have used today. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give the opportunity to the guys to ask you some questions, Rondi. Um I'm going to start a little bit about because he came, um, he didn't have an opportunity to give his say yet. And then I'm going to go to Aaron and then Impo and then Aditya to end it off. Um, yeah, Lubabalo, take it away. Yeah, Yo, your mic working not your mic not come working again. <laughs> no, okay. Okay, Aaron, you can go ahead with your question. Okay, that's a shame about Lubabalo. But first of all, Monday, thank you very much for coming on. It's a pleasure to speak to you tonight. And in terms of that incident, we keep on alluding to the Sir Pamela over. And I just wanted to know your thoughts on Quinton's captaincy in that moment, because when you compare him to Owen Morgan, for example, in that first game, when Tom Curran got the pump, he went straight up to him, almost put the arm around the shoulder, gave him some words of encouragement. Now, in your view, should Quinton de Kock have done that or have you seen it quite differently? Is that something that Quinton shouldn't do? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, you know, uh, I think younger players do need encouragement, um, especially when things aren't going your way. Obviously, as a, as a kid who's just starting off um, his international career, he uh, he's going to need all the encouragement you can get. Um, I've personally never really seen Quinton as a captain personally, uh, just from knowing his personality, what kind of person he is. It doesn't strike me as that type of uh, personality. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what they do with the test cricket if he's going to continue to be captain. Um, obviously, as a player, um, you can't doubt his skills, but as a captain, I'm just um, I'm not quite convinced just yet that he's the right guy going forward. Uh, we shall see what they do, but uh, I think they're still searching for that one leader um, that they, they want to use, uh, with, obviously, with Faf being out of the team. But it does help that he does have some guys that are experienced like a Faf, um, but I just don't, uh, I've never really seen him as, as a captain, uh, personally. Yeah, I was looking at Faf and I'm like, you're right there, Fafi. Um, we need you for this World Cup to have to the side. Upo, your, th your question to Mandy? Look, before I ask the question, just to put it out there. This was Supama's first game in nine months. He ha he was injured. He hasn't played in the four-day series. This was his first effective bowling outing. Um, and he had to go up against such a tough batting lineup. Um, so, yeah, I, I just kind of feel even taking it to Quinton, let's take it back to the management at the back. It, it, it was I felt it was slightly unfair uh, to have him play at this level. He's good enough to, to play it. Uh, to, 
but it's just, you know, it, it just speaks to that. But yeah, um, Monde, my, my question to you is, what do you do with 10 months going to the World Cup? If you're a Mark Bacha, what do you do? Do you go to the World Cup and say, we're going to win, we're going to, we're going to get a hiding to nothing, but I want to implement this aggressive, smart cricket with guys who aren't necessarily going to be the status quo, the guys you normally know, or do you go with for the tried and trusted and try be as competitive as you can be? Because I kind of feel as though I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind South Africa getting a beating, but getting a beating with youngsters and guys we don't know, but guys who fill a role and, and perform whatever plan it is that Mark wants to do. Yeah, another good question. Um, yeah, with 10 months, I'm not sure how many games there are in between before the World Cup. I think it's about so seven almost. Like, um, it's, it's between six and nine. Okay, so that's not that's not a lot of time, a lot of games away. Um, so I don't think experimenting at this point is, is the way that he should go. I think he should implement whatever he wants, uh, get the right players that he thinks are the ones that can win him the World Cup, um, and then go in that direction. I think um, blooding a lot of youngsters with without too many games in between, um, experimenting that way and taking a beating, um, I'm not sure it's the right way to go. I think you go with the guys you, who uh, you trust, first of all, um, the guys you think can win you, win you the World Cup, implement your game plans around those guys and then go forward that way. Maybe after this World Cup, you can start experimenting and bringing in the youngsters, um, the guys that you think uh, can do a job for you going forward. But if you do want to win the World Cup, uh, I do think you go with the plan A, which is obviously play the the guys that you do trust, um, unless there's someone that comes out of nowhere, which I don't see anytime soon, because he's used quite a few different players um, since his tenure. Obviously, um, with COVID and uh, the lack of cricket over the last couple of months, um, also ha has been a factor in terms of how we played, I think. Um, but I think, yeah, go with the tried and tested and take the guys you think can renew the World Cup and implement your game plans right now so that you're ready for, uh, for the World Cup in a couple of months' time. Cool, I did yet. Uh, hi, Monday. Thanks for coming on the show. Uh, my question to you is, is based on uh, what you said about um, Quinton's captaincy. And given that it's going to be a high-pressure tournament in India against top-quality opposition, do you think Quinton is the right man to lead the team at the World Cup? Um, and if not, then, you know, who do, should the protests go back to Faf, who obviously is vast experienced and successful in Indian conditions? or um, do we have another option? Well, yeah, as, as I said, I, I've never really thought um, Quentin was the right guy in terms of captaincy. Um, obviously, a brilliant player, very talented, um, but he does play of instincts. And um, I don't, I, yeah, again, I, I've never, I was actually pretty surprised when they picked him as captain. Um, whether to go back to Faf or not, that's a very good question. Again, uh, does he want to do it and is he going to be committed to doing it? Um, the other option, as I said, um, I always uh, rated Aiden Markram highly. Um, I did think they gave him the captaincy. Um, I think it was a series against India prematurely at the time. Um, but I think he's got all the talent um, in the world to be able to, to play that role. And uh, they've been talking about him to be the captain of South Africa for many years now. He's been groomed for quite a long time. So I think the fact that uh, he's lost a bit of form over the last couple of months or years um, sort of derailed those plans. Um, who you go to, uh, to be honest with you, if it if it's about winning the World Cup and, and doing what's best for us at the World Cup, I think you might have to go back to far for now. And then, you know, after the World Cup, then find your permanent guy you're going to use going forward. Uh, I just don't think Quinton is that guy at the moment. Those are excellent, excellent answers. I, I want to ask you one about thinking going forward, um, especially with the ODI series coming up. Guys like Yanaman Malan, Calvary and George Linder were some of the youngsters, main youngsters in that squad. I mean, you obviously have guys like Bjorn Fertain as well and others, but I want to specifically ask you about Yanaman, George and Carl. What's your thoughts on them and their and, and the talent that they've shown and the way they've and what will they bring to South African setup, especially in ODI cricket? Yeah, as I said, I, I, I love the, the Milan kid, Yanaman. I think he's a very talented, explosive um, opening batter. I think he's got 100 in T20, I mean, in T20 game for South Africa, in fact. Um, Perrain, also very talented. Um, I think he's a, he's, he's a guy going forward that we can certainly use in the middle order, especially when a guy like Faf does eventually retire. Um, and, and Linda, I think, also very talented. He's a tall guy who can turn the ball a long way. He can hit the ball out the park, too. So, yeah, those three guys, I think, going forward as youngsters, 
um, can bring about that energy that you need. And also, um, as you go into transition of, again, we are in a transition period uh, in South African cricket. If you think about who's retired recently in terms of um, uh, AB, uh, JP Dumini just retired also. Um, Hashim Amla also just retired. So we lost a, a whole bunch of um, experienced guys who've been around for a really long time and uh, someone's going to have to <laughs> fill that void. So I think those young guys can come in and, and do a job um, and start to build from there because we are still in a, in a rebuilding phase, I would, I would imagine, with also Stain and Moko just retiring as well. So there's been a huge void that's been left by those guys and we slowly have to try and, um, and fix that. Uh, it's not an easy fix. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take time. I know as South Africans, we're very impatient when it comes to winning. Um, we want to win straight away. But I think you've got you to be a little bit patient because we've lost a lot in a short space of time. And it's not going to be easy to replace those guys. Mm. Well, thanks a lot, Manu, for coming on the show. I really enjoyed your insights. I'm sure the guests as well, the panelists as well, thought so too. And I hope you can come on the show again in the future. We really like your insights. No, cheers. Thanks very much for having me, guys. I enjoyed it. Cool. See you, man. Cheers. So, guys, let's make, let's get this ball rolling. Let's get into some of the comments. It's been hectic. Um, there's a lot of comments going here. Obviously, you know how South Africans react. I'm going to go through them. Um, try talking without crying. <laughs> I'm, I'm fighting it. I had that all saying, oh, no, he's really sad. England are just too good for us. Um, Jessica October saying, I was hoping we would poll first. I thought that too. I thought that when we won the toss for change. I think England would have gotten 240. <laughs> I honestly think they would have gotten 240. You can see, you can tell, man. Because, I mean, the last time we scored quite decently against the team and they chased it down every single time. So it's like it's not like we didn't, we didn't really learn from our lessons, I feel, from the last series no, that they were but here. it's... And the Australia series as well. It's the same exactly. old thing. It's it, our batting. The day our batting works, our bowlers just decide to, 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 to take the day off. The day our bowlers do quite well, the batsmen all of a sudden act like they don't know how to pick it up. It's crazy. It's crazy. I, I, it's exactly like that. I was sitting there and I was watching the game and I was saying, you know what? We had... To, to defend much lower totals in the first two games and we bowled well actually like we bowled really well i think against england i know england mm. batted really well and combated it well but in this game there was no plan like there literally was no plan and i feel like supamla was kind of thrown to the wolves because i mean they brought him on in the periods where you know that josh butler and and milano are gonna open up after they, they got their eye in at the period when you know that they're gonna do that and I felt that the that reason, was this is one younger. of the reasons why, like, I, I, I sit there and, and ask myself out of the four people, Enoch, Boucher, Victor, and Graham, surely you know Luto hasn't played, hasn't bowled a ball of cricket. His first competitive ball of cricket was tonight. It's like, what, what, what are we supposed to do with that? What is he supposed to do with that? I just hope that this isn't the last time he doesn't play. It, well, the last time he plays, because. You, you've literally brought a man fresh, cold from an injury, haven't haven't played cricket in nine months. He's bowled in the net, and you expect him to do what? Exactly. Rather go with Junior Dollar. Junior Dollar's played, so I don't I don't get that. That really bothered me a lot. Yeah. So you're gonna go on to Werner's um, comment, and he says just a few points. Great to see Rassi playing with a lot more intent today. Milan through um, thoroughly deserves his number one ranking. Uh, and Giri really needs to get his pace back up over 140 kilometers per hour like before. Um, that I, I'm, I'm, I'm quite shocked that he actually did lose his, his pace as much, as quickly as he did. Um, I remember he was bowling 145 consistently, especially in that Red Bull campus cricket um, back then. He was already bowling high, high speed. Guys, this, is, this, this wasn't a pitch for you to bowl 140, 150. Yeah, it wasn't. But I'm talk it, But he's probably obviously talking in general. He's not talking necessarily no, about but, this particular game. But, but, it, but if you look at the way Lungi bowls in, in, in a shorter format, he does decrease his pace yeah. uh, because of because of the nature of T20. The person who just bowls guns blazing 150 is 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 Anuk and he does that quite well. Yeah. It, I was just disappointed at at the fact that we just only have Plan A. 
Yeah, Aditya, you would you would notice this, and you can maybe comment on this as well because of the IPL. There was some inconsistencies with Lungi's game this this IPL. Um, it's it's been coming along where he gets he has a good start and then he has a bad finish, or he has a bad start and a good finish. Um, what is your analysis on that? And then Aaron, you can chip in on that as well. I think his his game plan in T Twenty cricket is to rely more on variations as as opposed to express pace. And I think Quinton said that in his uh, press conference yesterday as well. Um, so maybe that's his that's his game plan. Uh, whether or not he actually plans on on bowling a one forty plus uh, or his his usual his usual pace uh, remains to be seen. Uh, again, I think with Lungi he needs he needs direction. I think all bowlers need direction. You know, particularly when you're you're confronting the world champions in T20 cricket and limited overs cricket, you know, and um, it's 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 difficult. It is difficult. So I guess Lungi had that problem with with Chennai Super Kings, but um, I know for a fact that like the backroom management, Stephen Fleming, MS Dhoni, etc., really did like sort of prop him on. And uh, towards the end of the IPL, you know, when he came back on, he looked a different bowler. So clearly there was a lot going on behind the scenes. Um, hopefully that's going to happen in the South African setup as well. Uh, but I guess we'll have to wait and see in the remaining T20s. Mm. Aaron, I'm going to let you talk on, about this. Um, there's a comment over here about Quinton de Kock. I know Mondi spoke in depth about it and I know you guys spoke in depth about it, but he says not right for the captain. Not once did he run down his bowlers and, and offer support or advice while our bowlers were ripped apart. Sad. What are your thoughts on that? You see, I'm very conflicted about this because Quinton is a young captain at the end of the day. And of course, what he did in the moment, and of course, in hindsight, we all know it's 2020, it was the wrong decision not to go up to the Pamela. He's got, Qu he's got Quinton the cock at the other end. He's got Owen Morgan on the opposition, sorry, to almost look at and analyse. And he easily could have done that. Exactly as I mentioned beforehand, Morgan did that with Curran with that 24 and over in the first game. So for me, I think he needs to almost open up a bit more to his players, obviously trusting them, show that he trusts in them as well. And that is a fantastic way. Just a gesture, come over to them, put your arm around them, give them some encouragement. And tonight, I don't know, just the body language, the way in which he looked as well, looked very stern, almost defeatist in many ways. I wasn't very impressed. With that being said, though, how many games has he had as captain? He's not exactly an experienced figurehead. It's not like Morgan or Dunnessy or Donut. He's had 10. Right. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's not exactly like 20 or 30 games, so he's still going to be learning. There's going to be bumps in the road per se. But in terms of so far tonight, that really, really did disappoint me. I was not happy with his captaincy in the slightest. And again, just completely sent out the wrong message to a young bowler like Sir Pamela. Hmm. <laughs> We've got a guy here saying, I think George Linder, captain of his, uh, uh, he is like high secret here. I'm not so sure about uh, George Linder taking the captaincy immediately. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't... I don't think you'll ask for it either. <laughs> I don't think it's something that you'd ask for either. No, um, I, my problem with, with, with today is, it, with Quinton, is I, I, I kind of feel as though, as, as Aaron says, he's, he feel, he, I think he feels he's on his own island. It, it, like he's taking everything on him, but he doesn't realize that the others are that side. Where was Faf? My question was, that's more where's Faf, Temba, um, Rassi, to just calm, you just need one guy to go and walk to a bowl and say, dude, calm down. What are you trying to do? Mm -hmm. That's all you need. I have to say, guys, so most streams that we've had on, on at, at the time at one night. So thanks a lot for everybody for tuning in. Smash that like button, please, and get subscribed if you haven't subscribed already. Um, so thanks for everybody for the support. Um, let's get into more of the comments over here. I, I questioned the inclusion of Riza from the start, and he proved me right. Um, you, you guys, we've been talking about this in depth, about how South Africa picks so many batsmen that are similar in D20 cricket. Um, I feel that you need two kind... My, my perception of this, if I'm going to strategize and think about it, I would have two type of players that are like your anchors, and the rest are kind of more attacking-minded cricketers. So, like, when you have Faf and Rassi that bat three and four, do you need an anchor at the top of the innings? I'm not so sure. Like, a lot of people are going to now talk about Bavuma. Bavuma showed intent today. Um, 
I, I think he showed that he can turn it on if he has to. And I think people are going to come be very critical of Bavuma. Um, mm. My problem, my problem with Yanaman Malan, only problem with Yanaman Malan is that I wanted to see him placement in this particular tournament, in this particular series. I wanted to see him come in, get an opportunity to play against Spin. And that's the reason why I said he must bat number five, because most likely when he comes in, he'll play against Spin and McKinney. He can really test what he's learned. He can really test what he's learned because he spoke to me in an interview and he told me that he's going, that he's been working on his spin. He knows that it was an issue and he's been working on his spin. So when I, I'm thinking that the situation, if I'm a coach and I'm like, if I'm looking for an explosive batsman and I would rather let a youngster like Yanaman Milan, who's in his early 20s, I would rather let him get a 32 of however much of balls or a 12 or a 13, whatever, than get a guy that's a lot older that learns nothing from that experience, really. I feel that a younger guy will learn from the experience a lot better. What are your thoughts on Riza's inclusion? Well, because I know that you... Um, I love you, Riza. I think he's Yeah, you great. love him. Um, and I love him too. I mean, I love him too, but I mean... Look, I, 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 there's, no, there's no secret. I wanted him at the World Cup instead of Aiden Markham, but guys will vilify, will, will jump on top of me for that. Um, but it's overkill to have Quinton, Timber... Riza, Faf, and Rassi. That's overkill for me. You have five guys who want to have, who take time to get themselves into the game. They're stroke makers. They, they, yes, they can adapt their games as they get in, but they need to get in. Um, and, and Riza had a start today and he just threw it away. And that's the disappointing part for me was that nice. he got a start and he threw it away. Um, and then my, my problem is is from a balanced perspective, couldn't they have gotten... I would have actually played Heinrich Klaassen with this team without Riza. Yeah, because Heinrich Klaassen was sick play, today, though. It, even yeah. Calvarena then, or, or, or Yanaman, somebody else who is a middle order, limited overs batsman, who understands his role in that middle order. Because what you're telling me is... Because the best... But the best balance of this approach is 11 is Faf at 3, regardless of whoever's batting in front of him or around him. Um, and, 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 and so if you're going to start tinkering with that, that, says a, that, that, that makes me question um, Mark's plan and, and also the selection of the squad. Because it's, Riza wasn't, it hasn't been in your plans for the past year or so. I think he played in the... He he didn't play in, in, in against England. He was in the squad. He didn't play against Australia. Why are you selecting him when it's you've gone over six or more months out before the thing that you when you weren't selecting him? Um it, I think it was it was severely unfair to make him look up he I think he'd be happy to bat the three. It just made everything I would have wanted I want five to get as many balls as possible. That's my as a South African, that's what I want. It used to be me wanting AB to be, to face all the ball, as many of the balls. Now it's I want Faf to face as many of, of the balls as possible. So first drop should always be Faf, and then after that, Rassi at four, and then you need to figure out what happens with five and six. I think yeah. that's the easiest way for Mark Bacher to go forward. And if it was, if the reason was to push him up the order so that he can get an opportunity to bat and give him the opportunity, obviously when there was a collapse. Drop timber and let Riza open. Yeah, yeah. If that was the reason, I'm saying, for example, then the selection of Pat Van Buren baffles me as well because he's not getting had a chance to actually showcase what he has, what he has mm. available to him. So, um, if you if you were testing with this lineup and you want to really test, give your batsman an opportunity when there's three wickets down, put to. Put the new guys under pressure. Let them see how they perform. Because that's the whole point of putting a new guys in the team. Mm. Is to test them in the most difficult. Problems. What's the point of giving a guy a new, an, um, an opportunity um, when with the when the, the situation suits him? Because the whole point of having a new guy that you want to test him and see if he has what it takes to be able to take South Africa to the over the line. You're not always going to get in a situation where the conditions should suit you or the situation suits you. That's not how it works. So I mean, yeah, there's a lot of things. But I think this particular comment. By Inam is going to be directed straight at Aaron, and that is someone called Rassi Erasmus. The World Cup is nearing. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> sorry, man. Sorry, I just had to throw it in. We need some sort of um love and. <laughs> yeah, Hamid, if if I could, could I just throw maybe a proverbial spanner in the works? Because yeah. I, I've taken both your points on board there actually, and you mentioned about the anchors and almost an explosive batsman. 
And then Poe did just mention AB there. And I just wanted to know your thoughts on this because we keep on, we almost keep on, not what to say, mocking the smart, aggressive brand of cricket. It keeps on popping up in every single show. And isn't AB almost the very personification of that brand AB of cricket? AB does not win tournaments. I want to tell you now, AB does not win tournaments. He's great for, if there's, like, we would have won this series if AB was there. That's what it is. Like, that's, he'll give you joy in between. He doesn't win tournaments. I've watched this man lose a game in Paul in a final, and they only needed 140 to win. So, <laughs> but I'm all, all I'll say, all I'll say, people must speak for Rassi's mentality. Rassi's no, mentality. All, all I'm saying, want guys. To... Is you've got a top four there with Bavuma and De Kock, a very explosive, hard hitting, powerful, dynamic opening duo there. You've got two anchors potentially, Faf at three, Rassi van der Dusen at four. Then you could have AB de Villiers coming in as a finisher. He's one of the best T20 batsmen in the world right now. He's shown it in the IPL, he's shown it in England, he's shown it in the Big Bash. And I, I understand your point, right though. Now, I, right now, I understand I that go point. <laughs> On horseback, go fetch him. <laughs> But that's what I'm saying. Seen... Wouldn't the team balance be a lot better? That's all I'm questioning because I've seen it all Aaron's week. And... going to be at the World Cup. Don't worry. Oh, he my will. goodness. He will. For that. Yeah. Don't worry. No, don't I, worry. I, he probably he's will, man. Because look here. We're in the worry. situation. Okay. We in the, if you look at the team set up, right? Boucher trusts his top four. Same top four all the time. Picks the same top four, top four, top four. Number of he mixes around with the five. He mixes around with the six. Like, I think... He said it in his press conference. He will go out and go get AB closer to the World Cup. He's going to have that conversation because AB, if AB is batting the way he did in the IPL, he's, there's no way he's not going to ask AB to vote this. And AB will play. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I can put my money down right now that AB will play. I can put my house down. If, as, so my whole thing was this. Only if a five was selected that can play an explosive brand of cricket, that can smash the ball out of the park, that can turn it on, hit a quick quick 50 for you in 20 balls like Rassi did today. Only then would I say, whoa, 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 AB, that's okay. Go sit back. We need this guy to bury for us for the next five years. Rather back your, your boy keys and let's just do this. But back your boy keys. I don't know if you understand that, but okay. Uh, <laughs> but um, in this situation right now, when we don't know who is going to bat number five for us, we don't know who's going to be our six, unless they're going to play Linda at six as that batsman spinner. Then that situation, the only answer for that is AB at the moment. No one's put up their hand. I feel nobody's put up their hand in that number six position, number five position, and said, look here. Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. Rassi van der Dussen, Rassi van der Dussen is a four. I know, Rassi, no, I understand, I understand. I'm with you there. You, top four, I get it, I get your point. Heinrich Klaassen. Heinrich Klaassen has had a great limited over season before COVID. Average, I don't know, 200, whatever it was, um, in, in the 50 over game. He's he's he's, he's good games. enough. He's good enough. He's great enough. He's not he's not A B. He bats ahead of A well behind A B in that Tony Spartans team last year, and he didn't do too badly. Why not him? Maybe six. No, so 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 I I I get that's the, my you can't not you have to put AB. No, he, well yes because Mark Bouch is there. I get it. Yeah. I would have actually walked away a long time ago from him because I, we, we can't be having different things for different people. Um, but can't your six because the, the big problem is you need someone who can bowl something at six, which is why Harold Clarkson should either be. He's going to lose out. But so AB will bat at five. You're probably going to have Chris Morris or Dwayne Pretorius at six. And then you're going to start that longish tail. I'm um, not so sure if, if, if Boucher backs Chris Morris as much as people think. I'm not 100% sure because he never comes up in the conversations when we ask. It's always, it's, uh, AB is always the question that is asked to him. So I'm not 100% mm. sure if, he, if, he's, if he's into... I mean, I think that... The second spinner, I think George Lind has now proven that he's the second spinner for, for the for, for the Proteus. I think anybody, everybody can agree that. Yeah, he's, he has the mentality, he has the, the fight in him, he has the ability, both bat and ball. And he's not scared. You can mm. see that. He wants to take on the uh, the bowlers. He might go out with a loose shot or something, but he, he's not afraid. And that's important that we have that fearlessness. If we can bat the, bowl him at seven as our all-rounder, right? And then have 
then we need to fit, find a place for Antile to come in. But um, I will bet my bottom dollar that I will make space for AB with bunches there. So <laughs> I don't know how we're gonna. Are we talking about no, this in the context of the World Cup, though? In yeah, in the context of the World Cup. Yeah. In context of the World Cup. Okay. I think you guys are, are, are overhyping AB so much. I'd rather get JP Dominey than AB De Villiers. Honest to God. Honest to God, I'd rather get JP Dominey than, 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 than AB. Okay, I'm, let's I'm see what you want to say about this. I'm going to go back to a point that I'd made on a previous show, given that the World Cup is in India. And again, the jury is divided on it. But given it's in India, I think there needs to be a complete rethink about how South Africa plans its batting. So again, I'm going to go with Quinton and Faf opening the batting, AB at three, Rassi at four, Miller at five, Andile, you Morris, like the rounders and so on. You guys just don't like Timber. I don't understand. Timber, I think, scored. What did Timber score? I think Timber scored. How many runs did Timber score in one of those three T20s? He scored, he scored quite, a, quite, a, quite a few runs. You guys don't like Timber. Um, Temba is a great player. There's no doubt about true. it. He's, he's a great player. But no. Temba versus AB in India? Sorry. Guys, IPL is the biggest problem for South Africa because you get you get you get you get A B beating about um these young up and coming Indian bowlers and all of a sudden we want him in the side. The guy who fits this team and fits this team well is sitting in the commentary box in Cape Town. It's not I, AB IPL teams. IPL teams are more than capable of beating national T20 teams. Michael oh, Vaughan himself oh. said that if Mumbai Indians was playing in the T20 World Cup, they would win. And that's a fact. <laughs> They're by far the strongest T20 team in the world. You know what? I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> let the people, but I know the people, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to now start saying the Kings 11 are going to come now down and beat us. No, guys, come on. Come. Mumbai. Okay, yes, maybe Mumbai, because you've got Rohit and Quinton. You can't, you can't run around that. You've got, who else is playing for Mumbai? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Pollard. Yeah. Hardik you, Pandya. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. But who's bowling to AB De Villiers? It's, it, how many of those? It's Boomer yeah, and exactly. It's Boomer, Trent Bold, James Pattinson, Rahul right, Shahar. Named, who, so who you've just named make. three internationals. So who's the who's who's batting on the other side from Mumbai? If you've already named three, three, three internationals, you can't have all the internationals bowling at AB at the same time. I mean, it doesn't matter. Like in the game against Mumbai Indians, AB was the one who smacked the 50 of 20 balls. Mm. So he is playing international level bowlers. You know, we, um, we can't, I, we can't I, doubt I, AB's ability. That we can't no, go I'm against. Not, no, guys, I'm not doubting his ability as a dom- at a domestic level. The man has not translated it to the Proteus level. If he's that great, why have we been so poor? If he, he's the, played, he's given us many took- opportunities. They never the guy you want to so that's seriously though. The guy but you it's want a matter of role definition. Play. It's a matter of role definition. Like there are plenty of players who do like you look at Glenn Maxwell. Glenn Maxwell's IPL record is abysmal, but Glenn Maxwell's T20 record for Australia is outstanding. And it's the same with one day cricket. And the, the, the difference is that it's it's not because he's a different player at the IPL. It's just because there's been more clarity. Like this year at the IPL, he's batted at four, five, six. Okay, and he's the sort of player who needs a degree of confidence. <laughs> what is an idea? I'm not bad on this one. But I agree with you, DJ. Mm. It is role definition. It has to happen. The only it will it well right now none of the none of the Proteus players know what role they're playing in this side. Yeah, yeah, and and, and I think that's been. So, I yeah, think it was right with the fact. I think it was right to the fact, which you can't really like like. Quentin said you can't really compare the international games pressures to the same as the IPL. Um, the way the, the makeup is different. I think that with, with regards to, with T20s, I don't think South Africa's ever taken T20s really 100% seriously as their main formats. They've always been pushing for that ODI World Cup. That was their, that is their little thing that, that, that's that been haunting them for their whole, their whole entire life. So I think there was a lot of experimental stuff happening with regards to um, the T20 Sides, um, I don't. Um, if you how many games did I must actually check? Um, the, the amount of games okay. played, okay. all of that. Look, look, I'll, concede. I'll concede. Here we go. Put AB in the world cup squad, 
when you don't win the World Cup, don't come back with excuses. That that's my thing. When you don't win the World Cup, don't come back with it. <laughs> but there are no okay, guarantees, right? No, no, it's not guarantees not that. with anything. Help the side. He's going to send the side back, take this this cricket team back years. It's going to take years for this cricket team to come back. And I kind of feel this tour, the fact that a that 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 Boucher has a, ha, hasn't actually gone and looked for number five and tried to push Rusty down to number five. It was one of those situations where he's trying to create a spot for his friend. And I felt that it was kind of unfair. You've got Calvarena. If you want to see Pite Fumble, you're on bat him there. If you want Hannah Kloss into bat, they give him that opportunity. Don't create a makeshift number five and make Fath bat at four for two games in the series just because um, you, you you want to show. I don't know what he's trying to show us. So, look, put AB in the team. Let's see what's going to happen. I don't think we're going to, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. Give us any just. He's going to give us anything. South Africa doesn't get T20 cricket. We are still figuring it out for 17 years. Um, you know what? I, I You're talking about JP Dumini. He's someone I would call back because that's exactly the position we need to fill. He's I mean, our most like successful. I mean, JP Dumini in T20 cricket. In format, he is the guy. It's just you want a flashy no, no, guy who knows how to sing soprano. No, if you get if you get JP if you get JP back and you get AB back, then then we're talking. <laughs> but then again, <laughs> we don't know. Uh, it's it's up to the fans to decide that. Um, they say some of the fans saying obviously they must be missing Miller. Uh, we haven't. Didn't, it's a pity we didn't get to see Miller in this particular series. It's a really a pity because I think that he needed to either show that he is capable or show that he's not capable. Either either one or the other. I mean, I like Dan's comments normally. I can't wait. For the next thing that we went to this is say with the World Cup. Imagine that the World Cup out. Uh, <laughs> you do know that. Net, oh, oh yeah. But oh no, it's never gonna happen. Well, we will have a documentary. It's always for teams yeah. that don't win. Talk what do you think it will be called? Chasing the what? <laughs> Chasing the one. Uh. I don't know. I, I, that was a lame dad joke. Sure, but you guys are supposed to stop me from making those type of jokes over here. Um, let's see some of the other stuff over here that's coming through. Yo, there's so many coming through here. Um, my guy was <laughs> Saturday night to play in the World Cup. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> the only idiot would not want to play. Only an idiot would not want to play AB Hey, guys, don't get rude. Um, that's fine. That's okay. Is it, is it impossible? Granted, as his little visit to David Malan. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that will be a major shock. Imagine that David Malan says, I want to play for South Africa. <laughs> but even even the Crowder uh, brothers, because apparently like, their dad used to play for Zimbabwe and he was in yeah. he was in touch with oh, CSA. Born in South Africa. Hang on, hang on, hang yeah. on, hang on, hang on, hang on. One of them, one, okay, one, one of them was born in South Africa. Sam yeah, Curran was, was born South 30 minutes away from me, so he's definitely English. Yeah, you're only one of them was. You're not, you're not claiming Sam Curran. He is 100% <laughs> English. No, he's English. He's English. Um, it was but, quite weird because when I looked at the, yeah. I looked at the dates that they were born and stuff, right? And they're quite close in age. One of them was born yeah. in, in 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 South Africa, and then the other in one was that. born in a different city, a different city in England, and another one was born in a different city in England within like a space of three years. I was like, yes, sis. <laughs> I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> Anyway, so uh, David Conway will knock Odyssey out of the team. I will, love that game. I will enjoy that game so much. <laughs> what about Curtis Camper, bro? And did Ireland, does Ireland uh, make the team win? Yeah, no, they should. They, no, they, they have done. They have done. Guys, yeah. we, we can't be looking at guys who, <laughs> who, who are playing for other teams. But for me, Devin, 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 I went to school with Devin. I know his struggles. I understand. He never got. He, he, he got the opportunities he got went went enough. He went and he found it in New Zealand and happy happy days. If he knocks us out, he knocks us out. That's how we should look we, at it. We invented T Twenty cricket, but we don't know how to play the format. It's like England and football. Yeah, I mean they invented it, football. It they could have played for years. <laughs> they have one World Cup. <laughs> yeah, okay, they won one World Cup. And bring back Herschel Gibbs. Bring back Herschel Gibbs. At least as batting uh, consultant. Yo, imagine, imagine how she gives. I, I don't think Ras Riley Dosa wants to play for South Africa. I think he's made oh, that quite clear. Daniel Osmond was saying, chasing the Curry Cup. 
We will give Dan Miranda a whole a poll. He likes it there. Call it Cab Dalport. Um, sure. Uh, just wait and see. Quentin is asking for fearless cricket. Remember, four years ago, Morgan was doubted with his fearless cricket. Just to watch. I, lo I love the passion and I love the belief. What was fearless about that performance? Like, honestly, what was fearless about that performance? About to do something. There was, there was nothing aggressive. There was nothing smart about that performance. Yes, we batted very well, and, and that was great, but we were let down by another half, the other part. You know, it's, it, there's two parts to cricket. You know, you can't just say, yes, we batted very well. You should win at Newlands, setting 190. We did it. It, it, there's, I've got no words for that. Like, uh, even like, here's the fun part. During a drinks break, can't someone just be like, "Hey guys, what what's going on?" I don't understand. I I really don't understand. I'm trying to sit here, guys, and give you some as best insight as I possibly can. But it's just some of those things and the performances and the decision just just baffles no. you, and rocks you, and you're sitting there. And I was watching you guys talk in the in the in the in the in the chat, and I was like. I don't know what to say here. Like, uh, it's like I'm watching stuff and you think that, yes, okay, cool. We put on a great score. Our bowling attack will be able to, you know, it's not the same bowling attack, I understand. But, and then Davin Milan and Charles Butler do what they did to us. And I was just like, wow, we are far behind. Now, is the thought process winning this World Cup or do we, how do we approach this? Do we go, do we go, look here, guys, we're going to give a, put a young team in that World Cup to get the experience because that's where I think we should be going because there's two World Cups in the space of two years so like I mean maybe not this World Cup maybe this World Cup's not for us guys not this one maybe the next <laughs> I don't know I don't know what we can do within nine, with a, in a couple of months no know. my thing is go with a plan let us know what it is communicate well and properly and so we all understand what you're trying to do this three games we don't know what he's trying to do we know that he's got a top four. We know that he's got a, a bowling attack sorted. But outside of that, we don't understand what where else he's trying to do and what style of play he's trying to, to play. Today's batting performance, I was like, oh, these are the protests of all. This is Russell Domingo protest. Preserve your wickets and explode at the end. And we did. So, mm. hello. Does it work? Yeah. Maybe. You know, and then you can then back your five bowlers to try and, and win you the game, which is what Russell always lent on. And today, we didn't even have a plan B. And he said he didn't care about six bowlers. Yeah. Luba Bala, you're saying you want Mark Bouch as the next case? I've tried. I did try to get him um, for an for interview. I don't think it's something that he likes to. I don't think he likes talking to the media unless he has to. Um, and understandably, show I guess um, people come out for him. People will come out for him. So I, I have tried. I mean, I would like to get Graham Smith on the show. If you guys really want him there, then go, go send him a DM or, or I don't know, tweet him and say, "Come on, cricket fanatics, man!" I don't know, guys. That's what your your job there is, fans. Or uh, uh, Graham's not gonna come. Sorry, no. Graham, I don't Graham, think Graham, it's a hostile environment here. Yeah. Graham's going yeah. to. Yeah, I think I don't think it's a, a nice place for for me to put Graves with him right over here with all you guys. I'm gonna <laughs> tear him apart because you guys come after us. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Thanks a lot for everybody for the support, guys. Thank you a lot for the show. It's gone out almost an hour. Um, I'm gonna be really looking forward to previewing the ODIs because I think that we're gonna get to see the likes of Yanaman and Bjorn Fortein and Calvin Reina, and we're gonna see a nice. I remember that switch. I'll never forget. When we lost the series to England, the Test series to England, and I came down to Cape Town and we played the ODIs next, right? If I remember correctly, the vibe in the ODI camp, it was just so amazing to be there, to sit there amongst them, the way the feeling was around the, the camp, the way they were in the nets with each other. It was like a whole new, fresh group, man. So, like, I feel the same thing's going to happen over here. Um, it's a whole fresh group that I think is going to be in the ODI side with a core group of people, obviously, from the T20s. But ultimately, it's going to be a nice, fresh group. I think Carl brings a winning mentality to any team that he walks into. The boy, I promise you, to have a conversation with that boy. I'm going to try to bring him on here to have a conversation with all you guys sometime in the future. But when you speak to him and you th listen to the way he thinks about the game and the way he thinks about winning and the mentality, <laughs> the boy is a genius. I mean, he's coming to so many times. He's coming under pressure. 
in a Cobra situation when they're three down, four down, and he, mm. and he pulls them out of trouble. All formats. Did the same with the Rocks. I mean, put under pressure. He loves it. I mean, for him to say things like, I love to play under pressure, it brings out to, to it, I feel that like there's no pressure when that's his BMT. He says, he's being, he said, um, I don't feel the pressure because at that point, everybody feels, thinks you're going to fail. So at that point, I come out and I just play my natural game. To have a mindset like that at, this, at such a young age, I mean, I think that's remarkable, man. That, that stuff that you tattoo on your body, if I could have a tattoo, I would do so. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not actually for everything Cobras. Like a lot of my players, not, a lot of my friends will tell me that I'm a big Warriors fan, actually, because I love the Warriors, guys. Um, I'm, I feel I'm quite... I'm, if I talk about a guy like Reinhard van Tunde, who has a winning mentality as well, he's not a Cobras player. That boy has a winning mentality. Marcus Ackerman, the way he thinks about the game. Vian Lubber, the way he thinks about the game. And there's a lot of youngsters that I can say, think about the game differently. With, and they have a winning mentality, even though they might not have won anything, but they have a winning mentality because it, makes, it takes a team to win something. But you can have individuals that have that mindset. So I can name you loads of guys that are not from the Cobras that I feel are quite amazing players that need to be to get that side. Bryce Parsons mentality. They're struggling in, I mean, flipping hell. The guy was playing the first ever test match in his whole career against a team like India. They're getting, they're getting completely pummeled. And that boy comes out 50, comes out, he performs, comes out, performs. That boy's mentality is ridiculous. And at such a young age, I look for the maturity and the mental maturity. That's what I look for in a player. And that's it's not just an ability because anybody can have the talent, but you need to have the mental strength to be able to pull it through in any sport that you do. So, yeah, that's my rant, guys. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Thanks a lot to Aaron, to Umpo, to Aditya for coming on the show. Aditya, thank you so much as well because it's so late by you. and You're still here <laughs> sitting with us and talking to us. So thanks a lot for coming on the show. Guys, don't yeah. forget to, as um, Aaron always points out, like, comment, share, subscribe. Click the notification bell for all future videos. Subscribe to the magazine. Next week, we're going to come out with a new magazine. we got an awesome cover um, story, which Umpo is going to love. Um, so he's gonna love our cover story. Um, so I'm just telling you now, already. So you better download that one, uh, Upo. So Send subscribe to, to the channel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm okay, uh, then go to cricketfanaticsman.com for all updates. We've got a tab there for the England series to update you on everything that we are doing. Um, if you have a business and you're looking to get sales online, even if your business is offline, there's a free video on the channel to teach you exactly how to do so with us. So thanks a lot, guys, for tuning in. And we'll see you guys very, very, very soon. Take care, everyone.